Hello everybody. Today I want to share with you how I calculate my liquid soap recipes. Some of you may have seen my liquid soap uh, recipe video. I've only got one on this channel, but it has been hugely popular. It's a very straightforward um, recipe and I show how to actually make the soap in that video. I'll put a link to that below. Um, I've also shared a video on how to calculate soap recipes, but that's geared towards bar soap recipes. Now, liquid soap recipes are quite different to bar soap recipes, so I thought it was about time I showed you how I work out my liquid soap recipes, put it into soap calc and uh, work out what to do, and then I follow my usual process for making the soap. So I'm going to um, show you a little close-up look at my booklet, and I'm going to use the example of the liquid soap recipe that I used in my video. So I'm just going to show you kind of what I went through in that process and then I'm going to jump onto my computer and show you in soap calc what you actually do. Before I get started there's a couple of things I just want to point out. Number one, liquid soap making is a very big topic and it's quite complex. There are lots and lots of ways to calculate soap recipes and lots of ways to actually make liquid soap as well. So I'm coming from the perspective of somebody who's just doing it one particular way. Don't take my way as the right way, it's just one way that I have worked out to, to work really well for me. I'm just making liquid soap for my personal use at home. I make, you know, batches at a time that last me like up to a year or so, or maybe even more. I've actually still got some of the paste from my video I did in June 2020. This is some of my liquid soap paste that I still haven't diluted. It still smells good, so it keeps a long time. So this is just the easiest method that I've found just for everyday kind of home soap makers. The second thing I want to point out is that this method is a bit different to how a lot of the experts make their liquid soap. Um, I have this book, Liquid Soap Making by Jackie Thompson. It is excellent and if you want to get into liquid soap making I highly recommend it but I just want to point out that the way that Jackie and a lot of other pros um, in soap making the way they calculate their liquid soap recipes is different to how I'm going to show in this video. How it's different is that many of these resources they teach you a method whereby when you calculate the lye amount, the potassium hydroxide amount, because remember it's potassium hydroxide instead of sodium hydroxide that we're using for liquid soap recipes. What they do is they calculate a slight lye excess. And the reason for that is because in liquid soap recipes, if you have excess oil in the recipe or excess unsaponified fats, you can get separation, the soap can be cloudy, it can be not great. So you don't want to do a super fat like you would do in bar soap recipes. And the pros, they actually do the opposite. They do a lye excess. So it's almost like a negative super fat. And what that does, what it makes sure of is that there's absolutely no unsaponified oils left in the soap recipe. Now, that does make the soap, the liquid soap, too alkaline. So what they have to do then is add an acidic solution to then neutralize the liquid soap to bring it down to the correct pH. Now, you can do that, um, but you've got to get citric acid and other ingredients and learn that whole process of neutralizing the soap. What I found is a really nice compromise way of doing it, and this is how I've always done it, is rather than creating a lye excess or an oil excess as you would do when you're super fatting bar soap, I calculate my liquid soap recipes to have like a zero or one or even two percent super fat. Now, so I'm trying to make them as close to neutral as possible right from the start. And in my experience, I found that works really, really well. I've never had a liquid soap recipe. I must admit, I've only probably made, I haven't made that much liquid soap, but all of the batches that I have made, I've never had any separation. So I've never had too much or any um, excess unsaponified oils in the recipe. And I've never had them um, be too alkaline either. So calculating liquid soap recipe with a 0% super fat or a 1% super fat, even though 
you know, soap calculators are never 100% accurate because all of our different oils that we're using, they're all, they all vary because we're buying them from different regions in the world. They do have different saponification values because of the different crops and locations and seasons and all of that. So it's not an exact thing, but so far it has worked for me. As I said, I've never had any separation or any unsaponified oils and my soap batches using this method always cook down perfectly with no lye excess. So I find it a lot easier to just do it that way and then I don't have to worry about neutralizing the soap after that. Some of you might be asking, oh, how do I super fat my liquid soap? Well, you can't. You could, but you run the risk of getting separation in the oils, the unsaponified oils separate, separating out of the liquid soap. If you want to make your liquid soap recipes more gentle, there are other things you can do like adding glycerin into some of the water portion of the recipe and things like that and changing up the oils. You know, use oils that don't dry out the skin, so not using too much coconut oil and things like that. But super fatting is not for liquid soap making. So I'll just go through my recipe example from my liquid soap video from um, June in 2020. That's my one on the channel. I will link to that below. This is my actual recipe that I worked out <laughs> before I did that video. Um, so this is just, it's very rough and I apologize. I hope you can read it, but I just want to show you exactly what I do just to make it really clear. So the first thing I do is I choose my oil batch size. For that recipe, I chose 700 grams. An oil batch, that's just my term for the total amount of base oils in the recipe. I generally use between 500 and 1000 grams, so between half to a kilo of base oils in my soap recipes. That gives me a good amount of soap when you consider that you're adding dilution water and, and um, other ingredients other than the oil. But the most important thing for me is that you have enough oil and ingredients in your soap pot because with liquid soap making, you have to cook and stir and stick blend the recipe quite a lot. And if you don't have a big enough volume of soap batter in your soap pot, you're gonna have issues with splattering and you really don't want caustic soap paste splattering all over the place. So I always make sure that my um, pot is the right size and shape and that my oil batch is usually around at least 500 grams. That gives me enough depth of liquid when I'm stick blending. The next thing I do is I think about my water amount in the recipe. Now back then I used to use the lye concentration method for calculating water in my soap recipes. I have since abandoned that because it seemed just a bit too confusing for people and they were mixing up with thinking that that meant something to do with the amount of lye in the recipe. Lye concentration just means the amount of water in the recipe and the amount of the concentration of lye in the lye water solution. So this one has, is a really high water recipe and 20% lye concentration for this recipe equates to about a four to one water to lye ratio, um, which is really high water. And the reason for that is that, like I said before, in liquid soap recipes, you're doing a lot of blending, a lot of stirring, a lot of cooking. So you do get a lot of evaporation. So you wanna make sure you start off with a decent amount of water. Uh, you could use a bit less than that. You know, you could use a three to one water to lye ratio if you wanted, or even lower, two and a half to one or something like that. But I tend to use a pretty high water amount for my liquid soap recipes. Um, in this recipe, you can see I wrote 2%, then scribbled it out and put 1%. <laughs> I decided to go with the 1% super fat. Some people who use this kind of method, um, they'll put zero or they'll put up to three. And everybody I know that uses this method um, don't have any issues with it. I've never had an issue using a one or 2% super fat. And then I work out my oils, what I'm gonna put in. These amounts, they don't go in to begin with. These amounts here, like the water and the lye and the oils, those amounts don't go in. The soap calculator tells you those later on, but I start off with just deciding my percentages. So in this recipe, I used 70% olive oil, 20% castor oil, and 10% coconut oil. I'm not gonna go into the reasons why I did that 
uh, here because that's a massive subject all on its own. But this is a good all-rounder recipe. It's not too drying. I really like it. Um, and the water amount, the soap calculator tells you that because that's determined by your lye amount and your water to lye ratio and your KOH, which is your potassium hydroxide amount, the soap calculator tells you that too. So it's mainly just the oil batch, the water amount, the super fat and the percentage of oils that you need before you get to soap calc. Uh, you can see I've written a couple of other things down here. I've just written down the weight of my pot without the lid. I weighed that before and that just helps me to, once the soap paste is cooked and cooled off, I can then just put the whole pot on my scale, take the weight of that and then subtract the weight of the pot and that gives me my weight of soap paste, which then makes it a lot easier to calculate the uh, dilution water. You can hear I've decided that I'm going to use 2% essential oils of the finished soap weight. Um, oh, I've got a few notes here. I don't even know what all this means. I think I ended up with 640 grams of paste. I don't know what that means or that. I didn't write it down. <laughs> um, I diluted some of the soap, but then I put the rest in the fridge and I ended up using one to 1.5 paste to water for the dilution. So that was my dilution ratio. These are just little notes that I've added at the end. You can see down the bottom here, this is my essential oil calculations. So in total I made, for the, for the amount of paste that I diluted, I made 1,663 grams of finished diluted soap. And then I multiplied that by 2% and that gave me 33 grams of essential oil because I wanted 2%. Uh, and then I wanted to use rosemary and tea tree, so I worked out what 70% um, of that 33 grams total was, that was 23 grams, and then 30% tea tree, and 30% of 33 grams is 10 grams. So that's my essential oil calculations and how I do that. Okay, once you've worked out what you want to go into your liquid soap recipe, the calculating part is actually pretty easy. So I'm using soap calc, as you can see here. You can use other soap calculators if you want to. There's just one thing to be aware of. Make sure you choose a soap calculator that has this option here. See how it says 90% KOH and there is a box that you can tick? Uh, you want to have that option because most potassium hydroxide, and that's what KOH stands for, potassium hydroxide, as opposed to NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide, which is what we use for bar soaps. So most potassium hydroxide is about 90% purity in my experience. My supplier actually has on the label 90%. So you want a soap calculator that gives you that option. So to work out this recipe, I just go through the same steps as I do for my bar soap recipes. I just go through all of this one by one, add everything in, and then we'll get our recipe. So we start off here with the type of lye section. The default that's selected is NaOH, which is sodium hydroxide. We want to tick potassium hydroxide. You can make dual lye liquid soaps that use both, but I'm not experienced with that. I just make simple potassium hydroxide liquid soaps. And I also tick the 90% KOH box because I know that my potassium hydroxide is 90% pure. So that's the first one. The second box, weight of oils. I work in grams and so I tick grams and I highlight that and I'm going to put in 700 grams which is my oil batch size I've chosen for my recipe. The next section I move along to is the water. You can see in my recipe written down, I used to use this lye concentration method. So I'll, I'll stick with that. Um, but these days I find the water to lye ratio is a lot easier way to explain it to other people. So I tend to use that these days. If I was gonna do the water to lye ratio method for this one, I would put in four to one or three to one you know it would be a pretty high water amount but I'm just going to stick with the lye concentration method and I used 20% for this recipe the next section now this is the good bit so super fat 
Now, in a bar soap recipe, you would want to keep that 5% super fat or maybe lower it a little bit, maybe make a higher super fat, but you would generally want to have a super fat. In liquid soap making, we want to bring that right down to zero or to one or to 2%. I'm going to do 1%, which is what I did for the recipe I made in the video. And that worked out really well. And that generally works well for me. It just gives you the tiniest little safety buffer, but not enough to add any real super fat to the recipe. Fragrance, I completely ignore that. I just leave it blank. As you saw before, I work out all of my essential oils my own way. Next, I go down and I add my oils in. So what have we got? Olive oil, let's start with that. Olive oil, there it is. I'm gonna add that into the top box and then I'm gonna put in, what have we got, 70%. Next, we've got castor oil. So I find castor, there it is. Click that in, and then I'm gonna put in 20%. Um, and finally, we had coconut oil. So I'm just choosing coconut oil 76 degree. That's the regular unfractionated coconut oil, the one that gets cold if you put it in the fridge, but is liquid in hot weather. That's just the regular one that you want put that in and for this recipe we had 10% so I've put that in so those are the only three oils that I've got in this recipe you need to make sure that everything adds up to 100% um, that's the only thing you got to look out for but these clearly do so that's all I need to put in I'm not going to go through an evaluation of this recipe in terms of its qualities in this video um, that's a really big subject and I just really want to show you how to calculate the liquid soap recipe so we'll do that so once you've got everything in you just click this button down here at number seven calculate recipe and then when you're ready to view the recipe just click view or print recipe and now this is cool if you want to you don't have to use a booklet like I do you could just write up the top here you know Ellie's liquid soap or something like that you know put in your your name of your recipe and you can print this out you can even write different things about your additives and your essential oils or any notes and print that out it's a cool thing about soap calc I don't bother with it though I just write it in my little booklet but anyway here's your final recipe so I just generally check everything over I've got my total oil weight 700 grams uh, I've calculated the water as a lye concentration. I put 20% lye concentration for the lye solution, which is a high water soap recipe. You can see here it's that four to one water to lye ratio and calculated as a percentage, water as a percentage of the oil weight, it's 85%. So it's a really high water soap. Then I look down here and this is where I take the water amount and the potassium hydroxide amount and I write these two figures onto my notebook. So I've got 599 grams of water and 149 grams of potassium hydroxide. There's my oil amount total again. Um, it gives you the total paste amount. So this is the total soap weight before it's cooked. It will be a bit less than that in the finish because you'll get some evaporation but that gives you a rough idea of how much paste you're going to end up with which you will then you know add water to to dilute the soap and you can see that in my video where I show how to actually make this soap and here you've got your oil amounts so I've got 490 grams of olive oil 140 grams of castor oil and 70 grams of coconut oil and that's it. Once you have got that, you can go ahead and make your soap. Um, please have a look at my video where I actually show how to make this very recipe. That will give you an idea of all of the things that uh, you need to be careful of when you're actually making liquid soap. It is quite different to bar soap making and liquid soaps, depending on the oils that you use in the recipe, they can behave in really weird ways. <laughs> so, um, you know, the video would give you a bit of an insight into that. Um, and I hope you enjoyed that, everybody. I hope that was useful. Please let me know if you've got any other requests for other technical subjects like this. I'd love to try and help you out. 
Um, thanks again. Thanks very much for watching. If you would like to support the channel, please feel free to head to my Buy Me A Coffee page to make a donation. And I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks everyone. Bye.